In the past few weeks, we've been talking about all the different accessories that you can use with your flex shaft. And in this series, we are going to talk a little bit more about the accessories that you can use with the Fordham BL. The BL is a very powerful workhorse and I cannot imagine not having it in my studio anymore. Let's jump in and take a look now. The BL is tiny, but don't let that size fool you for one little bit. This machine goes from 500 to 7,000 RPM and is full of torque. It is actually very difficult to stop this machine by putting too much pressure on it. As you can see here, I've got a lot of different accessories that can be used with the BL. Some of these accessories will require different attachments for the BL rather than just the tapered spindle that we may normally think of when we are talking about the bench lathe. The BL comes in a number of different configurations. When I ordered mine, I ordered it with the two tapered spindles. And that is because at the time that I purchased this, the accessories I used in my studio would require the tapered spindle. However, as I've used this machine more and more, I've seen how versatile it actually is, and there are a lot more that you can use. Now, to remove one of the spindles, you just take the hex wrench and you can just loosen up these different hex screws, pull that off. When we look at the motor shaft, it's not completely round. There is a flat spot here, and that is so the different accessories or attachments can be slipped onto here and tightened into place. Now, some accessories are meant to attach on the right side, while others are meant to attach on the left side. For those that have both right and left attachments, the item will have either an R or an L on the attachment itself. Now the BL has a couple of different features. It does have suction cups here on the bottom of the motor. And you might find that even though you push this down onto your tabletop, there may be some movement still. If you have a permanent location you'd like to put it in, you can also use the mounting holes here to attach that to a bench top. When you use the BL, you should always use a proper dust collection system or at a very minimum wear a respirator to prevent the inhalation of dust particles or other debris into your lungs. The tapered spindle is good for a lot of our polishing buffs that you've seen or used, uh, felt, anything like this that has just that little hole in there. And then when you put this on, that hole is going to enlarge and really tighten onto the spindle itself. It's also good for our 3M wheels. Now, one of the things I wanna point out, if you ever use these 3M wheels, notice that I have a black and a gray. In this case, it does make a difference where you use them. The gray ones are also marked with an L. That means that they will be threaded onto the left side of your machine, whereas the black ones, they're not marked with an R. However, they are meant to only be used with that right-sided taper spindle. When it comes to the tapered spindle, I have a lot of accessories that go with the tapered spindle, and that is going to include any of my felt buffs, my chamois, my, my cotton, whatever, any of those buffs. And again, on this, I don't want to go above four inches. So anything above four inches is gonna spin much too fast, even at 7,000 RPM, because as you get larger, that outside spinning action is gonna go much faster. So four inches for any of that kind of buff. I also have a number of different items. Like in this case, we've got some cotton uh, buffs that are tapered and rounded. I use these for bracelets. They're fantastic tools. I also have ring mandrels, and this has a wooden core, and, and this will just self-thread onto that mandrel as you spin this. Here I have three attachment options, and they do different things. We've talked a little bit about the tapered spindle. Now let's talk about the collet holder. Now the collet holder is kind of nice because it holds three different sized collets. We have a quarter inch, a one eighth inch, and a three thirty second inch. That means that we're actually able to use some of those accessories that are made for our flex shaft as well. In this case, I'm going to put the quarter inch collet into this, tighten this down, we're going to take this and insert it onto the right side of our motor shaft. And now I'm able to use any of my accessories that have a quarter inch mandrel. I need to tighten this up. Now, this also comes with a wrench and it comes with a pin. This pin has a spring on this. And what that allows us to do is to hold this into place, give it some torque and tighten this. 
And because we have the spring on there, it will automatically knock this out. Without this spring to push out the pin, some people would leave this in here and when you turn on the machine, you can easily hurt yourself a lot if this is still attached and spinning. To loosen this back up, again, I'm going to insert the wrench and my pin and I'm just going to twist the opposite direction. Now in this case, maybe I want to either change out the accessory that I'm using or if I want to use a smaller accessory mandrel size, then I need to swap out the collet. I do not have to remove this from the machine to do that. Simply unscrew that, select your next collet size, insert that, and once again, tighten this back up. And now I'm ready to insert my accessory and tighten that one more time and we're ready to go. We have a number of accessories that will work with this collet holder. One is a tapered spindle, again, meant for the right side. We also have a screw mandrel. This is going to allow me to use items with a three inch hole, like the two and three inch radial discs. This particular rubber wheel has a three eighth inch hole, but others have a quarter inch, which is good to use with a wheel mandrel. One of my favorite is a drum mandrel, and that is so you can use these sanding drums. So what I would do is put my sanding drum into place, tighten it up so that it expands that rubber on the inside, and now because it's got that quarter inch shank, I can use that quarter inch collet, insert that, tighten it up, and I'm good to go. So this is a sanding disc that's got a quarter inch shank that's meant to hold a three inch disc. And again, using that collet holder, I can just insert that and tighten it up. And now I've got my flat surface that I can just sand away on. On my machine, I typically leave the left as the tapered spindle. However, there are accessories such as our wheel mandrel that can be used either right or left side, but again, it does matter which one you put where. Now the wheel mandrel is going to be used for holding any item that has a quarter inch hole. So in the case of our wheel mandrels, I am going to take off, we've got a washer, and then we also have this little plastic washer that goes on the inside of that. That's just gonna help hold things together. I have my quarter inch hole, and that's just going to slip right on to the bench lathe. I'm gonna put that little plastic part back on, as well as that end, and then tighten this up with the nut. And I don't have to make this very tight, but I wanna make sure that it's nice and secure. Now let's talk a little bit about some of these accessories that you can use with the wheel holder. Now the wheel holder, you have either the wheel holder itself, which will fit on either the left side or the right side. However, you do need that correct attachment. In this case, I have the one for the right side, so this is the WM6. I also have my collet holder, so if I use this with a quarter inch collet, I do have a quarter inch shank on the screw mandrel for items with a 3 8 inch hole. Now when it comes to using these different accessories with this, we are looking for those that have a quarter inch or 3 8 inch hole. Now it is important that if you use a grinding stone, do not use one over two inches. That is very important. And then if you have a rubber bonded wheel, you do not want to use those over three inches. This one happens to be about two and a half inches. This is one of my unitized wheels and this is a three inch wheel. There's one more powerful accessory that you can use that will allow you to turn your bench lathe into a flex shaft, and that is the flex aid. Now this is meant to be used only on the right side, so make sure you take care to install it in the right place. Again, you're just going to insert that onto the motor shaft, tighten this up with your hex screw, and you are now ready to go. It has a lot lower speed, but higher torque. And that is also going to be really good with your hammer handpiece because the hammer handpiece should never be run over 5,000 RPM. And with that extra torque, you're going to have a much stronger hammer hit. And you can also use it with any other number of Fordham handpieces. This becomes even more versatile when you think that you can use just your flex aid with your BL and use it with the drill press even. So you really have a full system setup just right here with one little machine and a handful of accessories. It's a lot of different accessories and as we delve into this, we will talk about some of these a little bit more. Join me next time as I talk about some of the dust collection options that you have in using with the BL.
If you guys are enjoying this series, please be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. Make sure you mark that you want all notifications so that you don't miss any, especially in the series that we have coming up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down in the comment section and we'll be sure to get back to you. We'll see you guys next time.